Vietnam, wheat shipment, October 10th. This is a very simple thing. It's a very simple thing. They're hungry and we're not. If it is our stated policy to spare civilians in wartime, bombs and bullets, why in peacetime would we want to help kill them through starvation? I think uh, even the public opinion polls, the New York Times had a public opinion poll. I think the governor's council had a public opinion poll in the state of Nebraska. Uh, and in each case, the overwhelming majority of people said that uh, they felt we ought to give food and medicine to people who badly needed it, even if they lived in Vietnam. So uh, it's certainly true in this case that the government has not taken the lead. Every single major power and a great many small countries in the world are all present in the reconstruction of Vietnam. Now the one power that is conspicuously absent is the one that was uh, conspicuously present at the destruction. So that raises the question, why? A rich man slave his life away. He robbed his own brother's hand. But he lost his soul just to fill his purse. What shall it profit, that man? Well, what if you ruled this whole big world and owned everything in the land? And you lost your soul War in Vietnam, a memory too recent and painful for many of us, but it happened and there are many wounds yet to be healed. 15 million tons of bombs, 75 million pounds of chemicals dropped and sprayed on forests and farms. It was our strategy of ecocide, disrupt the ecology, destroy the environment. Millions of peasants fled their villages. Nearly 10,000 hamlets were damaged. Many totally destroyed. Also in the South, President Tu drove peasants off their farms and into the cities to keep the Viet Cong from winning them over. Over 10 million crowded into already overcrowded cities. One million wounded. 800,000 orphans and abandoned children. Hundreds of thousands of invalids. Millions of unemployed. A third of the arable land in the South was devastated. Vietnam could no longer grow enough food for its people. Once a leading rice exporter, Vietnam was forced to import rice from the United States in the South, from China and the Soviet Union in the North. Thirty years of war for independence from the Japanese, the French, then the United States left their mark on Vietnam. But friends, the war is over. And therefore it's time we ended it in our own hearts by confession and forgiveness so that we can reach out the hand of friendship to our former enemies. And it has nothing to do with their form of government. We're not asking our government to send their government arms. That's all over. We're only asking that our government recognize that all human beings have more in common than they have in conflict, and hunger needs to be met. In 1977, Church World Service helped organize a shipment of 10,000 tons of wheat, a people-to-people -people gesture toward reconciliation between our country and Vietnam. For the gift of wheat, Money and grain was given by thousands of ordinary folks and farmers from all over America. 
I'm Harvey Schmidt, and uh, I farm in central Kansas with my two sons. And uh, we farm wheat, uh, milo, corn, and then we have a dairy. I was made aware of that the Vietnamese people were short of food, and uh, my conviction was that if one of God's creatures is, a, is in hunger and need of food, that I certainly, if within the, my ability, want to provide that food to them. And when I became aware of the shortage of food there, I decided that I would want to contribute some of my wheat to the Vietnamese people uh, so that they could have access to the food that they needed. There was a public ceremony in March in Houston, Texas, to celebrate the wheat shipment. Among those appearing was Senator Richard Clark of Iowa. I suppose, first of all, we celebrate the event itself. Grain for hungry people. That's why we're here. That's why this farmer from Kansas gave his wheat and other farmers all through, through many parts of the Midwest and others in other parts of the country who gave money so that wheat could be purchased. And I think the, the great significance of this particular celebration is the fact that the people are taking the lead, not the government. But I would hope that uh, the government would learn something from that process. And it is a statement of our conviction that neither the complexities of the task, nor the passing considerations of national or international politics should deter us from that responsibility. Thank you very much. I am one of the farmers that grew this wheat, and rather than to plow it under, I give it to Vietnam, for they need it. I represent CROP, the Community Hunger Appeal of Church World Service, who made the arrangements to collect this wheat and to ship it by rail to Houston. Texas, and I'm giving this week because the children of, um, of the world are friends. I give this week on behalf of all those who gave funds to sail this ship. We understand that you were not able to get funding from the government for this shipment and must rely on both the denominations and the public for the funding. We gladly give. I represent one of the many endorsing and supporting organizations for this shipment, and I give this wheat as a gesture of reconciliation between the peoples of our two nations. The 10,000 tons of wheat were loaded into the holes of the SS Antiochia in April. Producer Bob Richter asked some of the longshoremen how they felt about helping send grain to our former enemy. They're hot, we're sending it to them. Send them, send them if we, we don't care, we got plenty of it. Everybody's got to eat. I, mean, I think that's the right thing to do. What do you think about sending, sending all this to wheat to Vietnam? Well, I think it's all right myself. Why? Well, the church bought it, haven't they? Yeah. Well, the people are giving that to business. But they were our enemy. Does that make any difference to you at all? No, that doesn't make that far as I'd buy gone. We're trying to all be friends now. Some Americans, of course, are vigorously opposed. Others are abstaining from this action, fearful to come down on either side of what they conceive to be a hotly debated issue. And most, I imagine, are indifferent to this first ship in three years, the sail from the shores of the United States to Vietnam.
since the war ended in 1975, the Vietnamese have been struggling to rebuild their war-ravaged land and to make their farms once again productive. Severe droughts, floods, and a typhoon have interfered, and thousands have had to help reconstruct dikes. Some churches that were bombed have been left in their destroyed condition as memorials to the war. Some are being rebuilt. Rebuilding is going on everywhere. All the farmland has not yet been reclaimed. There are thousands of live mines still buried, and not enough people have returned to the land from the cities. Adding to the problem is the Cambodian border war. A hundred thousand Cambodians have fled to Vietnam. They were fed by the Vietnam government until recent United Nations emergency food aid began. Hundreds of thousands of Vietnamese have also been forced to flee their villages and farms near their side of the border. This, of course, is making Vietnam's goal of food self-sufficiency by 1980 difficult to achieve. By 1980, we, uh, we tried to, uh, to, have, uh, to produce uh, 21 million tons of rice, uh -huh. for example. That's one of the ta main targets. How about, because uh, now agriculture for, uh, is for, uh, the most important thing. Uh -huh. How about, Harvey uh, Schmidt, the Kansas farmer who donated yeah. some of his wheat, and six other Americans, including me, flew to Vietnam in May on behalf of the Church World Service to meet the ship of wheat and to learn about the country. But now all the rice is harvested by hand. We have a tractor. We have a tractor. But mechanization is not very uh, widespread. We visited Bach Mai Hospital in Hanoi. It was bombed by the U.S. Air Force in December 1972. I saw the memorial to the destruction. E even in my wildest imagination, couldn't conceive of what had really happened there. And until one does go and view it with his own eyes, that memorial there, that bombed out corner of a building, twisted concrete with an iron hospital bed literally blown into the concrete, still there rusting. I can't escape the feeling that if the men who went over and dropped the, that desolation on a hospital, and certainly if the American people as a whole had a chance to see the results, would respond as I responded to it. One not of guilt so much as of shame and a deep hope to be able to make some restitution. How does he feel about Americans, us, coming to this place where uh, this bombing took place? Chúng tôi nghĩ rằng thì là vì sao thì các nhân dân Mỹ vẫn là bạn của chúng tôi. Because we think that whatever happens, the American people are the Vietnamese friends. Cho nên là các bạn đến thăm ở đây thì chúng tôi nghĩ là and uh, we think that because of your good, good feelings that you have come and you have come to see us ah oh, there's mr paul all Catholics fled the Communist North when Vietnam was temporarily divided in 1954. But actually, there are hundreds of thousands of Catholics still there. And Sunday morning mass was jammed when we visited the Hanoi Cathedral.
40 days after it left Houston, the SS Antiochia pulled into a berth in the Saigon River in Ho Chi Minh City. We stood on the dock side by side with our Vietnamese friends. One of them was Swan Wang of the Vietnamese American Friendship Committee. The American people had uh, uh, made a first step to uh, build the friendship and solidarity, the, the real friendship between the American people and Vietnamese people. And uh, we think that's very significant. News of the ship's arrival and our group meeting it was broadcast all over Vietnam on radio and television. Because of the embargo on trade and aid, special permission had to be given in Washington for the ship to sail to Vietnam. And it was the first ship from the United States since the end of the war. How do you feel about the ship arriving here in Ho Chi Minh City? Real excited. I've been looking forward for this for a long time. It's real exciting to have a reality come to the past. What do you think this means? I think it uh, strengthens our friendship with the uh, Vietnam people. Harvey Schmidt, our farm expert, checked out the condition of the wheat. It's real good wheat. of the ship were filled with wheat. Unloading from two of the holes was done mechanically. But in the third hole, unloading was done by manual labor, working in shifts 24 hours a day for three days. Every grain from the crane spill-off was saved. As they filled up, barges loaded with wheat moved up a tributary of the Saigon River to a flour mill in the city. major food staple in Vietnam, but Vietnamese people are accustomed to eating wheat products too. The French introduced wheat a century ago, and the Americans continued to use it during the war. from the Church World Service shipment was made into bread and noodles for distribution to hospitals, schools, and orphanages, like this one we visited in Ho Chi Minh City.
The shipment inspired a statement from Assistant Foreign Minister No Diem. Vietnamese people is, uh, how to say, very sentimental people. We, we, we appreciate very much all the efforts made by other people, from, especially from the United States, to come with a hand in hand to our, to our people after so hard a war. This represents some uh, the the feelings of 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 uh, simple folk in, in in the United States who are who are interested to to give uh, hand in hand to the Vietnamese people. Then they feel responsible for the for the for the damage done in Vietnam. So we, the, I think that not only I myself, but other Vietnamese people are very uh, deeply moved. self-sufficiency is a long-range problem and mechanized farming can help. Idle farm equipment sits outside the Center for Agricultural Research and Development in Ho Chi Minh City. The center is often called the CWS workshop. Church World Service officials Al Bartholomew and Paul McCleary had some observations. What we're doing here will be of more effect than 10,000 metric tons of grain because if we can help them in the business of building their own equipment, repairing their own equipment, and producing their own food, that'll be more help. Absolutely. And to see the kind of equipment that's sitting around broken now, it's obvious that's that one right. of the needs is the repair of equipment. Yeah, they'll, they'll be way ahead if they have this, if they can put what they have into running order. Most tractors and farm equipment in the South are of American manufacture and were brought in during the war. With years of embargo, repairing or replacing worn out parts is a difficult challenge. Each bolt, each nut, each part of anything they repair has to be handmade before anything can be put into working order. By coincidence, at the same time the wheat shipment arrived, part of a CWS donation of agricultural repair machinery also was delivered to the workshop. The equipment was purchased in Japan by American churches. It will be used to fix idle machinery and to develop special new equipment. Mechanized farming exists in Vietnam on a very limited scale. Soviet tractors like this one are considered too large and unreliable and they have frequent breakdowns. The Vietnamese are anxious to develop their own intermediate sized tractors to meet their particular farming needs. Finally, most field work is done by hand. 90 to 95 percent of all farming in Vietnam is non-mechanized. Workers farming in new economic zones often have a tough and difficult life. They're turning war-ravaged soil into land that will feed people. <laughs> this man was a soldier in the South Vietnamese Army for over 20 years. After the war, he went into a re-education center for three days and now he's in charge of a group of workers in the new economic zone we visited in the Delta. A translator told us what he said about the possibility of America coming back to his country to help. I hope uh, very much that the American will come here 
but uh, with goodwill to help us to reconstruct our country, not to bring war here. Vietnam is reported to have among the lowest ratios of cultivated land per person of any nation in the world. Food is the number one problem of the country. Seed, fertilizer, spare parts, tractors, and other farm equipment are all needed. Church World Service works in 40 countries. They're helping the Vietnamese people with emergency food and long-term food self-sufficiency projects. They're also helping refugees who have left the country. The mission of Church World Service is to help Vietnam and its people, not only because of a tragic war, but because it is a nation of 50 million in the family of nations. Sending this load of wheat to Vietnam was a way of our extending the hand of friendship and brotherhood across oceans. But more important, it's a symbol of hope for peace and normal relations between our countries.